I shake the gate just to make sure it's locked. And that thing did not budge. When people see pregnant students at their high school, they assume the worst. When I was given an assignment to be a teen mom, I was a pure and innocent human being. Then, when it came time to be a parent, everything changed. If you haven't watched part one, please do. I promise you, it's an awesome video. I'll leave the link down in the description for you to click and watch right now. Also, don't forget to stay to the end of this video because I'll be showing actual pictures that I took of Yuki for my project. For those who have already watched part one, welcome back and let's continue the story. So in part one, I left off where I just pulled Yuki from out of my book bag and carried her into the school. What I didn't expect was my health teacher, Mr. Brian, to be standing at the front door when I walked in. Remember, this isn't his real name, it's just a name for the story. I stand there partially in shock, but also slightly concerned for my child's protection. I mean, I know it's a doll, but part of me wanted to put my child up to my chest and hold her, just to make sure whoever suddenly appeared in front of me didn't kidnap her. So I just stand there for a few seconds, and me and my health teacher are staring at each other in complete silence. Then he says, nice to see the delivery went well. I was thinking, thank goodness he wasn't standing outside. If he were outside, I'm pretty sure he would have seen me pull Yuki from out of my bag. I smile and being the awkward person I am, I just keep standing there. It wasn't until he started to bother some other students that I decided to walk away. But this wasn't the first encounter that I had with Mr. Ryan. After the first day, I noticed the school was filled with people carrying dolls either wrapped up in scarves or hanging from their book bags. Everyone looked happy and excited to show their children off to their friends. Some of them were even taking selfies with them. This project seemed to be fun, or so I thought, but this indeed was a school project, and like all school projects, your teacher had to find a way to make it time consuming and boring. We were all freshmen in high school, which meant we were young, innocent, and easy to manipulate, which made it easy to give us ridiculously big projects. As for me, I don't know if it's because I'm a nice person or because I want to make sure I do everything perfectly. But despite how many steps it takes or how hard the work is, I always try to make sure that my work is 10 times better than the person sitting next to me. Somehow, I managed to not get caught yanking Yuki out of my book bag every morning and stuffing her back in at the end of the day. The project was getting close to the end. And I enjoy changing Yuki's outfit every day and making sure to write down when I fed and bathed her. It wasn't until one snowy day that I realized I couldn't wait for this project to end. One night, I was up early to check the news because they said there would be snow. And I was hoping the snow would be enough to close schools for the day. Unfortunately, there was still school. And to make sure the students knew, the school district made sure to release a statement saying that school will remain open. So, I walked to school in the snow, pissed off. Not only was I cold, but I was worried about Yuki as well because I always left my book bag slightly open to let her breathe. Again guys, I know she isn't real. But the thought of actually leaving a child zipped up in my book bag made me feel sad. On my way to school, everything was extremely slow. By the time I got off the subway, I knew I was going to be late. Because I was late, I didn't see anyone walking towards the school. There weren't any lingering late students or people cleaning the snow off the front steps. The school looked empty. And to top things off, when I finally walked up to the school, the front gate was completely locked. This has never happened before. So I shake the gate just to make sure it's locked. And that thing did not.
budge. Instantly, I was furious. I just stand there in the snow, thinking about how much I wasted my time and how I knew I should have stayed home. Overall, blaming myself for the whole situation. I knew they said schools were open, but the front gate was closed and it was snowing and cold. So I walked back with Yuki to the subway and somehow I managed to get on the wrong subway train. Every time I don't know what to do, I completely shut down and I have a panic attack. When I got off the subway, I didn't notice that the trains had switched tracks and that I was going in the wrong direction. I was so pissed off about making it to school on time and trying to be a good student that instead of paying attention to the stops, I was crying my eyes out. By the time I noticed, I was already going in the wrong direction, which freaked me out even more. I cried for the longest time, and I kept riding the same train, hoping that eventually the tracks would change directions again, and that I could finally get home. I can't remember how, but I did get home eventually, and by then, I was completely exhausted. My back was hurting from carrying Yuki for hours, and my eyes were sore from all the crying that I was doing. I officially wanted to quit school, quit the baby project, and never set foot outside of my house again. I was done. Yuki could stay zipped up in my bag for all I cared. I wanted nothing to do with her. Come to find out, my school wasn't closed that day. Apparently, there were a whole lot of other people who were confused as well, and the principal made a phone call explaining how the students had to use the back door instead because there wasn't enough time to clear the snow before the students could arrive. This made me extremely embarrassed and only gave me another reason to not show up to school the next day. In the end, I did show up and I showed up the next day and the next day and before I knew it, my project was over. I would say, overall, being a teen mom wasn't a great experience. I had to carry Yuki everywhere I went, which made me concerned about how people would react seeing me with her. Not only that, but the responsibility of having to remember when to feed her and remember not to leave her behind when I leave the house was too much. Although it wasn't always fun, I enjoyed dressing Yuki up in sweaters, giving her baths, and showing her off to my friends and family. So, in terms of preventing teen pregnancy, I guess the project was a success. But then again, there were other students who the teacher witnessed abusing their children and still ended up with a passing grade. So... I'm not sure how successful you would consider it. If you haven't already, go watch part one of this video series. I have the link down in the description, so don't be afraid to check it out. I promise it's a good video. Also, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe right now because I make awesome videos all the time. I don't want you guys to miss out. Since you're still here, that means you must really love this video. So could you please give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.